Let's get our house in order. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get Frank about it. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button and that little bell icon. Also, YouTube's doing a lot of uh, interesting things these days, and if you want to make sure you don't miss anything that I'm putting out there, always make sure to follow me on social media at the Real Frank Fryer on Facebook and at Carmelite Nick on Twitter. And if you have any questions for me, please make sure you use the hashtag Carmelo down below. Thanks again. Yeah, so Jordan B. Peterson. You know, one of the things uh, healing from surgery allows one to do, and I've been taking good advantage of, is I've been doing a lot of reading. And uh, his book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to the Chaos, has been one of the books I've uh, read during my time of convalescence, you know, as I'm healing up and etc. So, um, this Rule 6 that he has in that text, and I'm not going to sort of exhaust um, his text. I might do a couple videos on it, etc. Uh, because I think what he's doing with it and what he's offering is really of the utmost importance and particularly uh, to the Western world and some of the struggles that we have in relationship to ourselves, uh, society as a whole, and etc. But uh, that rule six really uh, struck me and that was, you know, get your house in order before you criticize the world. And, you know, one of the, the notions that I've been seeing online about this guy is, you know, sort of like he's, he's thrusting these new ideas upon us. I don't really think they're new ideas. I think they're ideas that he is helping us to rediscover and he's offering us a language to speak about them. You know, and uh, one of the other, on a side note, one of the other points that people are hammering on that I've read is, you know, at least from a Christian uh, perspective is, you know, he, he doesn't really claim a denomination or the Christian faith or etc. But yet he speaks about the Bible and all these sort of things. Well, you know, I don't really blame him for doing that and why. Because he's trying to, you know, evangelize, for lack of a better word, his view on life and how he thinks it may really help a lot of people. And he really authentically wrestles with the Christian tradition in relationship to the biblical foundation and the biblical stories and etc. So he's authentically uh, wrestling with those in my perspective. And one of the terrible things that we have going on in the world is that we like to apply labels to people. You know, so some people that he's reaching out to that may not be Christian will put a Christian label if he claims it. And the thing is, you know, the way I understand the Christian label or the way you understand the Christian label or the way other people understand Christian label you know they put him and others into this little box and then instead of dealing with them specifically as individuals or <clears throat> their thoughts or perspectives or etc they're dealing with the label they have applied to them so I don't really blame him for for not like declaring well I'm a Catholic or I'm an Anglican or I'm an Episcopal or any of these sort of things you know, so I, I don't hold that against him uh, because of his authenticity, particularly in a series where he's looking at the book of Genesis. Um, but that rule six, if I may get back to my original point, you know, get your house in order before you criticize the world. You know, I, that's not really new. I've been hearing something like that for years, ever since I've entered the religious life. One of my my uh, brothers, who was also uh, one of my sort of formators during my time in formation, a formation is a period in religious life where, you know, you're shaped and molded by the community uh, in relationship to the charism of the order, the history of the order, the spirituality of the order, and et cetera. You know, and he would tell me constantly, even to this day, he still tells me, before you ever leave your room, you always got to make sure you make your bed. He's been telling me that for years before Jordan B. Peterson was ever on the line because my brother, he would always talk to me about the Carmelite tradition being that our cell is our primary place of prayer, that if we don't have this place in order, how can we expect to be witnesses to the spiritual life and the prayer life when we enter out into the world and people reach out to us for help? So this need to make your bed to bring a little bit of order and this is one of the things i like about jordan b peterson is you know he talks about chaos is not sort of a, a means of non-existing but you know of sort of falling back on into this chaotic element of what being offers us and and when we bring about an order sort of a a good general structure and foundation and etc you know this being becomes intelligible and we can live out of that in an authentic way that not only aids us but aids the world in which we live in so, you know, this need to get our house in order, you know, and I've worked on college campuses for a year and I understand uh, to a degree and, and I sort of can empathize with his plight of like, you know, dealing with college kids with all the zeal but yet not having the necessary experiences to understand what their changes might in fact incur to the world. You know, and as I write this, um, the online currency, for example, for this online game World of Warcraft is more valuable than the currency in Venezuela. 
think about that. The, the currency for a video game is worth more in terms of American dollars than in Venezuela, their country's currency. But yet people claim things like socialism and communism are going to be the best things of the world and etc. But yet they don't take upon themselves the understanding of these cries of change in relationship to where they have previously occurred and etc. So, um, but then, you know, you don't want to stifle that zealous tree. So starting local, going global, you know, and his chapter is just very beautiful there. And it's rule six, if my memory serves me correctly, you know, this getting your house in order. And as a Carmelite, you know, my, my brother in the order always taught me, as I've mentioned before, got to make your bed. You've got to make your bed. You've got to, that place where you rest your heart, you rest your mind, you entrust yourself to the living presence of the Lord, just in case you do not wake up in the morning, you have to show respect and reverence to that local place and get it in the necessary order. So it can be a manifestation and a reflection and an ability of reflecting one's own structures of their heart, you know, and you may not agree with everything Dr. Jordan B. Peterson is doing. You may not like everything he's doing. Um, I think he's providing us a great language to wrestle with things. And I think that's always good. You know, if we if we look at Jacob, um, when his name was was changed to Israel and that idea that, you know, the one that wrestles with God, you know, we it's okay to wrestle with ideas. It's okay to wrestle with, with uh, points of disagreement. It's okay to, you know, figuratively wrestle with other people outside of the sport of course and etc and it's necessary because this is how we grow this is how our muscles get strong this is how we mature this is how our ideas can gain a deeper root structure into the nourishing water of being itself and reflect the glory and the goodness that it is to exist to have being and etc that's one of the important foundation stones of Christianity is that we've been called into being out of nothing. Why? Because of love. So this ordering process, this this coming into reality of structured being for us is, of course, rooted in the idea of love. The more we grow in authentic love, a love that expressed through charitable actions, through self-giving, through a multitude of different ways that have been expressed and manifested throughout the Christian tradition, we become more fully ourselves as we're called to be by the very fact that God has given us his image and called us to be in his likeness. So, you know, this one rule, and I might talk about some of his other rules, but this, this one rule, rule six, getting your house in order before you go criticize the world, it's, it's really nothing new. You know, I know I've heard it in the land of Carmel for years now. You know, I've heard something to this effect even when I was growing up, you know, from my grandfather who always taught me the necessity before I go out and try to change things in the town and force people to listen to me, I got to make sure, you know, I get stuff done at home. I got to make sure the garage is clean. I got to make sure this is clean. I got to make sure the local things are done before I get out there and try to tell everybody else to get their own stuff in order, you know, to look at thyself. And in the Christian tradition, another way of putting this is the beam in your own eye versus the beam in the other. Now, that's a hard pill to swallow because there is immense suffering in the world. And I know Jordan B. Peterson, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, doesn't shy away from that, but really states to us that this is a terrible thing and, and we need to work on it, you know, and to be able to cultivate the necessary changes in the ways of structuring our world, we have to first get our own selves in a good state of being so we can go out there and effect the changes necessary instead of adding to them and multiplying them through our own hubris and and I don't you know I don't remember him using necessarily the the, the word hubris or pride uh, he does hint at it every now and again um, and I know in some of his verbal lectures uh, he calls a spade a spade and we'll use that because sometimes our zeal when it's unchecked without the virtue of humility becomes very destructive and, and that's the nature of what hubris is. It, do, it destroys community. It can destroy our own sense of self, our own being within ourselves to feed itself because it puts our ego at the center of things and etc. So, you know, I, I'm just really um, stewing on these things as I read some other spiritual texts and wrestle with um, um, different readings I'm going through right now in the Bible and etc. And I just wanted to put this out there to you all. Um, and I recommend this book. I really do. I recommend his book, uh, the audio book. You know, I know my own biological brother's doing it. I've got some other people that are reading it. Um, and you know what? If you don't agree with me about it, leave a comment down below. You know, let's just be civil about it. You know, I'm not a perfect guy, nor do I claim to be a perfect guy. You know, I'm a priest that's always in need of a savior, just like everybody else in the world. You know, and I try through this vocation of my priesthood to represent 
that Savior to people so their hearts may be opened as my heart every day I seek the Lord through the Holy Spirit to open it to his presence. So Dr. Jordan P. Peterson, his 12 books on uh, an antidote to the chaos, 12 rules for life, great read, really good stuff, highly recommend it. I might do some more videos about it. I just talked a little bit about rule six today, get your house in order before you criticize everybody, uh, before you criticize the world. And you know, like I said, if you, uh, disagree with me? Leave a comment down below with that, that hashtag Carmelo. If you have some things um, positive today, share them down below. Let's get a good conversation going because that's how we all grow as human beings. Thank you again, my brothers and sisters. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. May God continue to bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for your time today. If you have any questions or comments for me or want to engage in a little conversation about Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Particularly use that hashtag Carmelo. It really pops out at me so I can really pay attention on those people that want to uh, engage me in conversation. Also, if you haven't yet, please make sure to click that subscribe button and that little bell icon. YouTube's really changing things up here too, so if you don't want to miss anything that I'm doing in relationship to my social media work, please make sure to visit me on Facebook at The Real Frank Fryer, and also my Twitter handle is at Carmelite Nick. These two things will always have what's going on in relationship to my social media ministry work. Thanks again, my brothers and sisters. No, I appreciate every moment that you give me engaging my content, no matter what platform it may be on. Thanks again. God bless. Thank you.